And we're starting off with Dynamite, as AEW World Champion MJF was on the show and had plenty to say about his altercation at All Out with Samoa Joe. The two brawled on the entrance ramp last weekend after Joe pushed MJF out of the way, but his promo on Dynamite was interrupted by the reigning ROH World Television Champion. Referring to MJF as Kid, Joe asked what his problem was, with tensions boiling within the AEW World Champion exciting the fans. It was MJF's reference to his past WWE tryout that truly set the fans abuzz though, as he spoke about having a promising tryout at age 19 and speaking with William Regal. MJF claimed that the longtime Triple H confidant advised him to wait due to his age, but MJF added that he knocked William Regal's ass out, a nod to attacking Regal in late 2022. The AEW World Champion claimed that he had sent Regal back to NXT, implying that he had ultimately rejected the veteran's guidance. The segment ended with Samoa Joe attacking MJF, leaving him injured. And what did you make of this segment, the references to WWE, and this feud? Let us know in the comments. It was on this week's NXT that Braun Breaker brutalized Von Wagner after defeating Wagner in a violent no disqualifications match. Post-match, Breaker hit a ring step on an unconscious Wagner as the live feed cut out, with fans assuming Breaker sandwiched Wagner's head with these steel steps. According to a report from Body Slam, several people in attendance who are regular NXT attendees were panicked by the spot, as the EMTs and other agents seemed legitimately concerned for Wagner. It was further noted that when the steel steps came down, they actually hit the back of Von Wagner's head and neck in something that was not supposed to happen. There was further panic backstage in NXT as Braun Breaker hit him in the head accidentally, and while the feed cut and the black screen was planned, certain aspects went wrong. The accidental shot to Wagner's head and neck left him getting split open by the shot, which was never intended, and Breaker's attack left everyone speechless at the show. We'll have to wait and see how long Von Wagner will end up on the shelf after Braun Breaker's assault, as this week's segment was notable, especially for what didn't go according to plan. This week, WWE's Superstar Spectacle will be held in India with many superstars, such as John Cena, Seth Rollins, Kevin Owens, Sami Zayn, and Jinder Mahal being confirmed for the show. Fans in India have been waiting six years for WWE to return to the nation and are understandably excited about the event, but one of WWE's top superstars won't be on the show. On Twitter, Becky Lynch shared the unfortunate news that due to a tear in her passport, she has not been allowed to board her flight and she will not be able to make it to the show in Hyderabad. After speaking with a WWE representative, Nick Houseman confirmed that Becky Lynch's reason for missing Superstar Spectacle is legitimate and not a part of the storyline for the show. Lynch would also tag Qatar Airways in her tweet, making it clear that this airline is the one involved with her situation, and fans in India hoping to see Lynch will just have to wait for WWE's next event. Lynch won't be at the Superstar Spectacle Live, but she recently resurfaced on NXT for the first time in years and has her sights set on Tiffany Stratton. Lynch will face Stratton for the NXT Women's Championship on next week's show in what will be a blockbuster match, and we now know the real reason for Lynch's sudden NXT return. As fans will remember, NXT used to share the same airing day as AEW Dynamite and would battle in the Wednesday Night Wars until NXT moved to Tuesday and Dynamite became the sole Wednesday show. As Brian Alvarez revealed on Wrestling Observer Live, WWE wants NXT to beat Dynamite in the coveted 18-49 demographic and believes bringing in Lynch will help do just that. A superstar with massive pull like Becky Lynch could be a factor in the ratings, and her match with the NXT Women's Champion could draw in the audience, but will it be enough to beat AEW? Time will tell. We've got some sad news to report now as former WWE star General Adnan has died at the age of 84. Adnan, real name Adnan bin Abdul Karim Ahmed al Qasi al farthi is a former WWF Tag Team Champion but may be best remembered for his role with the heeled Sergeant Slaughter in the early 1990s. A veteran who would also work for the AWA and New Japan, Adnan had a fascinating life both in the US and his native Iraq, and we'd like to offer our condolences to those who knew him at this time. 
More from AEW now as the reunion of Les Sex Gods, the pairing of Sammy Guevara and Chris Jericho has only really begun, but it's already feeling long in the tooth. On Dynamite, Jericho and Guevara were able to pick up a win over Aussie Open, an impressive victory considering the pair are former ROH Tag Team Champions, but the match didn't click in certain ways. It wasn't long before Jericho and Guevara were in a shoving match like children, an act that overshadowed the otherwise good match. The altercation resulted in security guards getting involved, adding a level of drama to this storyline which simply isn't needed at this time. Guevara didn't walk out on Jericho alongside the rest of the Jericho Appreciation Society, and it's clear that a match between himself and Jericho is coming, but this situation is getting needlessly complicated for what should be a simple storyline. AEW could still build a match with a more simplistic former mentor-mentee storyline, even if Guevara has still left Jericho in the rearview mirror. During a recent talk as Jericho, the Canadian would discuss the historic All-In event, including his match with Will Ospreay, saying that at one point there were plans for JAS members to face each other. According to Jericho, there was a proposal for Sammy Guevara to face Daniel Garcia at All-In, but it didn't come to fruition due to timing issues, but Guevara would still get to experience All-In and accompany Jericho to the ring. Jericho and Guevara will face off one day, but this relatively new angle already feels like it's tired and worn out, so hopefully it won't be long before the Spanish God and the Ocho collide. Dynamite also saw the first title defense for new AEW International Champion John Moxley, who put his title on the line in a thrilling opener. It was at All Out that Moxley ended the 326-day reign of Orange Cassidy, and his first challenger would be none other than AR Fox. Fox, hungry to make a statement after getting kicked out of the Mogul Embassy, came out swinging and would take control with a DDT for a near fall. The match reached the climax when both stars exchanged thunderous lariats, each refusing to back down, but it would be Moxley who'd emerge victorious after hitting his Death Rider on Fox. Moxley's open challenge is certainly a great way to keep the AEW International Championship relevant in the promotion, something that has often been a criticism of Tony Khan, and expect this to be the first of many title defenses for the new International Champion. In the wake of CM Punk's release from AEW, there's been no shortage of people having their say, with some believing that Tony Khan was wrong, while others think Punk gave AEW's boss no chance. We may never know exactly what happened backstage at Wembley, but one name who was there was Chris Jericho, who addressed Punk's release on the latest episode of the podcast. He said, I don't want to dwell on this or talk about, but I should address it. CM Punk, no longer with AEW, Wembley was his last match, which what a way to go out if you're going to go out. I did speak to him briefly. I was going to do a Frankensteiner off the top, and I know that he does that sometimes, so I was curious if he was going to do it. I went and talked to him for a bit, asked if he was going to do it, he wasn't. I told him I was going to do the GTS with a straight face, and I think for a second he thought that I was going to. I was joking, of course. I did see him that day. It's a regretful moment what happened, but Tony Khan made his decision. CM Punk was a big part of AEW from the time he was there, and if you're going to go out, he went out on top by having this big match with Samoa Joe in a sold-out stadium. That's my thoughts on that. Jericho regrets that Punk left AEW, which is quite the turnaround for Y2J, who would call Punk a cancer to the AEW roster immediately after the events backstage at All Out 2022. Many feel that if Punk wants to wrestle again, then WWE will be his only viable option, though it's been reported that several top stars have made it clear that they are against his return. While speaking on the Oh You Didn't Know podcast, Senior Vice President of Live Events Road Dog said he has no idea about WWE upper management's feelings on bringing Punk in, saying he's the wrong person to ask. All we know for sure is that CM Punk's days of working with the Elite are truly over, and it may have been the Elite that proved to be the last straw for the real world champion. It was in August, mere weeks before the all-in situation, that the Elite would collectively sign new, lucrative deals with AEW, ones that will keep Kenny Omega, The Young Bucks, and Hangman Adam Page around for years to come. During Wrestling Observer Radio, Brian Alvarez said that when the Elite signed those new contracts, word started getting around that CM Punk wanted out and that something was going to happen. Within weeks, Punk was indeed gone from AEW, but was his release a result of the spur-of-the-moment issue or the culmination of a plan by Punk to get out of his contract? 
Whatever the truth may be, Punk is no longer a part of AEW, as the Elite remain figureheads of the company and can now appear on every weekly TV show, including Collision. With Punk's bridge with AEW well and truly buried and his relationship with WWE mixed at best, where else is there for the best in the world if he wants to wrestle again? Speaking to WrestleBinge this week, new NWA World Heavyweight Champion EC3 was asked about the possibility of Punk joining, and he was very open to the idea, saying Punk would draw a lot of intrigue. In a swipe at Punk's situation in AEW, EC3 felt it was important to remind people that the NWA has a more professional atmosphere. And do you think Punk in the NWA is possible? Let us know in the comments. From AEW's past to AEW's present, as Jack Perry is still working for Tony Khan, though he is suspended indefinitely at this current time. Some have argued that Perry should be fired for All In, while others have said that he deserves a second chance like CM Punk got with All Out, and Eric Bischoff wants to see the young wrestler gone. Speaking on his 83 Weeks podcast, Bischoff argued that Perry should be fired because of his lack of talent than anything else, but added that the real glass situation in Wembley didn't help. He said, Just cut the guy loose. First of all, you're talking about a thimble full of talent to begin with. He's really only there because his dad, Luke Perry, was a soap opera star. That's it. Otherwise, he's making $200 a night on the indie circuit somewhere. This guy is not a star. He'll never be a star. By virtue of the fact that he thinks using real glass is going to get him heat, it should tell you everything you need to know about his potential. He doesn't understand the very fundamentals of the business. Bischoff added that firing Perry would give Tony Khan a fresh start and a chance to move on from All In without any painful reminders of what happened. He said, These are things that can all be addressed and be fixed, but not if you're constantly inhaling bad air. Just wipe this thing clean, chalk it up as a learning experience. It's a learning experience because I have empathy for Tony. He's learning on the job. The WCW veteran added that Punk should not have had a say in the backstage decisions, such as blocking talent from collision, calling it a sign that Tony Khan was losing control of AEW. Punk had no business expressing his freaking opinion, at least not in a way that would give people the impression that he has a voice, unless he does. Whose fault is that? That's Tony Khan's fault. That's losing control of the process. When you've got a talent telling another talent what he or she can or cannot do. Punk is gone, but should Perry join him in the unemployment line like Bischoff believes is necessary? Or would you give Jungle Boy one more chance after this suspension? Now Malachi Black made a significant impact upon his arrival in AEW in 2021 and wasted no time in attacking Cody Rhodes, resulting in a lengthy singles match between the two. For years in WWE, Black worked as a singles wrestler, only rarely teaming with somebody else, but it's been a long time since we've seen the Dutch superstar face somebody one-on-one. -on -one. It's been pointed out that Malachi Black hasn't competed in a singles match for AEW for a remarkable 440 days, with his last recorded singles match being against Penta Oscuro in June 2022. Despite his limited solo appearances, he has maintained a strong record in tag team competition, boasting a 14-2 record in tag matches this year. A lot has changed in AEW over the 15 months since Black's last singles match, and who do you want the former trios champion to face next in one-on-one -on -one competition? Let us know in the comments. It was in 2021 that Gable Stevenson clinched Olympic gold in freestyle wrestling in Tokyo, and the young prospect would sign with WWE just weeks after his big win. Despite being with WWE, Stevenson made his return to amateur competition earlier this year and dominated in his field, but has now pulled out of the Senior World Championships. USA Wrestling announced that they received notification of Gable Stevenson's withdrawal from the tournament in Belgrade, Serbia, but there's no reason on why he pulled out of the competition. It's an odd move for Stevenson, who is repeatedly teased competing for Team USA in next year's Paris Olympics, and who also competed at the Final X event in June, where he also dominated. Stevenson's WWE in-ring debut came at the NXT Great American Bash Premium Live event at the HEB Center in Cedar Park, Austin, Texas in July, where he had a count-out draw with Baron Corbin, and we'll have to see what's next for the Olympian, both in professional and amateur wrestling. Since his tragic passing last month, the wrestling community has paid tributes to Bray Wyatt, with many speaking about how creative the three-time former WWE World Champion was. In WWE, 
Chris Jericho would have a feud with Wyatt in 2014, which would see the two face off at that year's battleground, and Jericho thought immensely highly of the late wrestler. On his Talk is Jericho podcast, the inaugural AEW World Champion spoke with Wyatt, saying that the two shared a deep friendship despite ultimately ending up in different places. He said, At one point in time, we were really, really close friends, and not that anything happened, but you know, you don't see each other for a while and you kind of drift apart because he's in one company and I'm in another, but we always had a great relationship, and I always kind of complimented him and spoke to him about his ideas. Jericho added that he only learned of Wyatt's passing shortly before he boarded his flight to London for All In, saying it was a very long, somber journey from the US to the UK. Wyatt's death has had a profound effect on those who knew him best, and his legacy and friendship will never be forgotten, and our thoughts remain with everybody who knew him at this time. Wyatt's shocking passing comes less than a year after his return to WWE TV, and now we'll never see what exactly the company had planned for him as part of this return. Not long after his return, some suggested that WWE were planning on a faction dubbed the Wyatt Six by fans that would have involved a few superstars whose names had circulated in rumors. In December 2022, Vincent and Dutch of ROH's The Righteous attended some WWE tryouts and were later spotted in the crowd during the December 6th NXT, and these two, alongside names like Alexa Bliss and Bo Dallas, were rumored for the faction. Ultimately, The Righteous returned to ROH in April of this year, but when asked about the Wyatt Six on the Developmentally Speaking podcast, Dutch said that the ball seemed to be rolling at the time. Dutch added that the faction was definitely a possibility before WWE just stopped with the idea, and it's unclear if Wyatt's illness played a factor in the decision to nix these plans. Whatever plans WWE had, they'll now no longer come to fruition, as Wyatt's sudden passing has sadly put an end to what could have been some very interesting ideas on TV. We've heard several stories about how Wyatt helped those he worked with, whether it was coming up with promos or in-ring segments, but one superstar owes her WWE career to the late superstar. Speaking with Steve Fall of Wrestling News, Zelina Vega spoke about Wyatt and revealed that he had pushed WWE to hire her after seeing her tryout match with the company. She explained, He started a Thea chant. He started cheering for me during the match, and it was right as I was hitting my comeback and he was getting everybody else involved, and everybody at that point was cheering for me, and then they started clapping after the match was done, and he led that. He led that whole thing. And then I see him walk up to who was in charge of TR at the time, Talent Relations, and he said, she should be with us, that girl right there. She's been working her ass off like she deserves to be with us, and I was like, whoa, Bray Wyatt just said that. That is the coolest freaking thing ever. It's entirely possible that Vega would have made it to WWE eventually, but Wyatt certainly helped ensure she'd be signed, a sign of help that the 2021 Queen's Crown winner remembers all these years later. At SummerSlam 2023, Brock Lesnar lost to Cody Rhodes in the Beast's most recent appearance on TV, with some questioning what's next for the former Universal Champion. Recently, a rumor emerged stating Lesnar's situation with WWE was not a normal one and that he instead simply had a verbal contract with WWE, but that's not the case at all. A report from Ringside News has clarified that Lesnar does have a written contract with WWE, one that he cannot simply walk away from, but as you'd expect, it's a very lucrative deal. As for when Lesnar will appear next on WWE programming, that's yet to be revealed, but expect more of Brock on TV, despite false reports of a verbal agreement. Back to AEW Dynamite now, as Emi Sakura is back on the show after a near four-year absence, but her return to the Wednesday night show is not going well. This week, Sakura failed to claim Chris Statlander's TBS Championship in an open challenge, one week after her return to Dynamite saw her on the losing end of a six-woman tag team match. Sakura is gifted in the ring, but after years of not competing on Dynamite, having back-to-back -back losses is hardly a good look for the Japanese wrestler. More from Dynamite as Tony Storm's character as an old Hollywood starlet was a bright spot on an otherwise inert episode of Dynamite, the first after AEW All Out. Speaking on last Sunday's event, Storm said that she can't even remember costing her former friend Ruby Soho the TBS championship at the event, stating that she's always looking forward, never backward. 
The new character has been a breath of fresh air for the former AEW Women's World Champion, who has always been more praised for her in-ring work than her personality. Every week, Storm finds a captivating new twist on her irreverent character, and the character has clearly been working with the audience, judging by the reaction she's been receiving. And we're ending today with Swerve Strickland, who did not disappoint in his first AEW Dynamite appearance since being placed in a coffin at AEW All In. Interrupting an interview segment between Tony Schiavone and Hangman Adam Page, he not only took several clever jabs at the latter, but addressed the way he's been used in the company thus far. Strickland went as far as to call Page out for taking up a top spot he views as something Page doesn't really care about, and Swerve's delivery only added to the segment, giving it another layer of believability and credibility. The way Strickland whispered in Page's ears sealed this as a great segment on Dynamite, and will hopefully start a feud that'll elevate the former AEW World Tag Team Champion.